music start. Well, good evening. Good evening. How's everybody tonight? Good looking crowd. You came out in the middle of a tornado alert. I guess this is a good place to be since we're praying that something will come along and get rid of this roof so we can put a new one on. Y'all don't want it to happen tonight, huh? Maybe after everybody leaves. We got most of the leaks stopped. Praise the Lord. Who has a praise report? in my 20s and I couldn't because I stuttered so unbearably, horribly, mm-hmm. awful. You I got over it. I, could, I did get over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I told the Lord this, I said, if you kill my body, <coughs> my mouth and my tongue, I will never pass the opportunity up to praise your name. Good, good. To my knowledge, I never have. And I have a wonderful testimony, but I can't give it yet because they asked me not to say anything, but it is a miracle of God. My grandson loved his job. He has a house. Everything is well with him. Good. My two little great grandkids can't go to school because they got exposed to COVID, and they'll be out till next Thursday because they have some kind of Chromebook or something. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Lord may have overdone you when he fixed it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. We, we love you just like you are. Most of the time. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, hey, hey. hey I'll, I'll do backflips for that hot sauce. Who else has a praise report? I do. Yes. My granddaughter-in-law. Praise the Lord. Good. Hallelujah. The Lord answers prayer. Who else? I just want to say that the Lord's working in my son's life. Good. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? Well, stand with me. Let's uh, pray together and ask God to touch us here tonight. And, uh, I'm glad to have Sister Nancy Hinkle here tonight. I want her to come lead us in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are so grateful for your grace and for your mercy. We are thankful that it, your mercy is new every day. Lord, we thank you for the praise reports for this son, Lord. I know that you'll keep continue to complete the work that you started in this man's life, Lord. And we expect it and we'll give you praise in the midst of the congregation. And Lord, for the unspoken praise, we know that we will also rejoice with that. Father, we know that your presence is with us. We thank you for that. We're so grateful for you tonight, Lord. And as we step into this Bible study, Lord, I pray you'll give us ears to hear and open our hearts to receive from you tonight, Lord. Protect everyone from this weather. Lord, please protect our cars. No hail in Jesus' name. So, and we love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
working on a, an annual business meeting, which we did not have last year, and I've been shocked. Now one person has come to me and said, I really missed that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably what we're gonna do is do it on a Sunday morning. It'll be a little different, and uh, we'll be announcing in the next week or two what date that will be. We'll be reporting on the finances and et cetera, et cetera. Because of your generosity, we're in really good shape. Things are great. Claudia told me a while back, she said, it's so nice to come in here and not have to worry about the money. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Skip said it's real nice. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're delighted that this couple has joined us a few months ago. And... Uh, They've been a blessing to this body. And Brother Donnie Morrison is our speaker tonight. Would you give him a big welcome as he comes? Bless you, sir. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. It is certainly good to be here tonight. Amen. And uh, for the press of the Lord. And you're in a good mood tonight, which I'm glad. <laughs> so much so that I've got to tell you a story that I heard. There was a couple that was traveling in Dallas on Highway 20. And the husband saw a sign and said, Lancaster. Mm -hmm. Is that right? See, I'm not from here either. Lancaster. <laughs> and the wife said, no, dear, that's Lancaster. Lancaster. Not Lancaster. <laughs> Somebody say it for me. Lancaster. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, it can't be that. No, no, the husband says. It's Lancaster. Break it down. L A N. C A S Cas T U R Tur Lancaster, right? It is not Lancast C A S T er, he says, nor is the T silent. It's not Lancast er. I'm sorry, dear, it's Lancaster. <sighs> All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit the exit. Mm -hmm. We're going to the first restaurant, <laughs> and we're gonna ask them, how do you say the name of this place? <laughs> and you're gonna find out, it is not Lancaster, it's not Lancaster, and it certainly is not Lancaster. Husbands know it all, don't they? <laughs> so they go into the restaurant. The young lady behind the counter, the husband says, now we're gonna order something. But first of all, I want you to say the name of this place. Sir, my wife and I seen your sign out on the highway and we've had a discussion as to how you pronounce it. So I simply want you to take your time. Break it down. C 
Say it clearly so my wife can hear it. Okay, sir. McDonald's. <laughs> At least he found out how to say McDonald's. <coughs> or is it Mickey D's? Mickey D's. <laughs> well, see, I have a problem pronouncing this place, not university. <laughs> Church. And my daughter tells me, Dad, simply say walk. A cute walk. Walk a hatchy. Did I say it? Yes. Gotta put no. the S in there. Walks. 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 Oh, thank yeah. you. I call it wash a hassy. <laughs> <laughs> but why can't we just say W A X wax? Wax a hatchy. You can if you want people to know you're not from here. <laughs> People know that I'm not from here. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. The scripture I'd like to share with you is found in Philippians, the third chapter in the 12th verse, beginning in the 12th verse. Amen. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for this night. We're thankful, Lord, for each one that is here tonight. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you would anoint our ears to hear, to receive of the word of God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Forward in Jesus. I'm so thankful for the pastor's message Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Just keep on going forward in Jesus. Amen. Yep. And that, of course, is what Apostle Paul tells us to continue on in Jesus. Amen. He does, of course, compare the spiritual walk with the uh, physical walk, the spiritual race with the physical race. In fact, he tells us that the athlete the athlete disciplined himself. I want to say abuses his body <laughs> to get it in shape that he might obtain a prize of which, of course, he'd be the only winner. Whereas we are to discipline ourselves, the spiritual man, that we also might win a prize. Yeah. Oh, but it is eternal. And also, of course, all that finished the race. He that endured to the end is the one, of course, that will be saved. And I say abuse his body because, oh, that's the way I feel about exercising. <laughs> and my spouse has tried to get me to join the gym, which she's been uh, attending for quite a while, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> In fact, I like what Paul told young Timothy. <laughs> First Timothy, fourth chapter and eighth verse. Oh, you know what it is, don't you? I like the King James Version. For bodily exercise profiteth little. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but what she has been able to to get me to do is to walk and to ride a bicycle. In fact, it hadn't been too many years ago when I pastored at Bethel Hill, we actually participated in a walkathon at Southwestern. Three miles. Quite a few people there. 
Brother Rick Depost was there. I came in third. Wow. Yeah, I got a medal. <laughs> third place for those that's over 60. <laughs> or was it 62 or 65? <laughs> I was tempted to ask them how many was in that category. <laughs> Four. I was afraid they'd say three. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Amen. My bicycle, oh, you should see me ride my bicycle. I won't call them hills. I have an area where we live at that I make a circle, well, somewhat of a circle. And there's some incline. I don't call them hills, but they're inclines. <laughs> and time to get to the top of that incline, my front wheel is like this. But my back wheel that is warped. In fact, I do have people that will stop and say, do you know your back wheel is warped? Is it doing this? <laughs> but you know, those times when my, my muscles are sore, my thought is, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. It comes to my mind, press the pedal. Mm -hmm. Press the pedal. Mm -hmm. Left, right, just keep pressing the pedal. Yes. And if you keep pressing the pedal, you're going to make it home. Mm -hmm. Can you say, praise the Lord? Praise Lord. If we keep pressing Onward, we're going to make it home. Amen. And that's not to give you the impression that this life, of course, is one of riding a bicycle. <laughs> because Brother Roberts, I believe it's Brother Roberts, it said, said Sunday morning, there's no other life. Amen. What other life is there yeah. but this one? Mm -hmm. The disciples said to Jesus, where would we go? Yeah. They've been touched by Jesus. We've been touched by Jesus. What other life is there? Right. Amen. Oh, but the joy of the Lord, amen, in serving him. But yes, even in this life, we at times have to keep pressing that pedal and continue to go going forward in the Lord. Well, now, several years ago, when I was pastoring Bethel Hill, I had a route. And on this route, there was a hill. And the first time I tried to get up that hill, I could not quite make it. So I had to get off the bicycle and walk up the hill. It was a joy when my muscles were strong enough that I got to the top of that hill and went down the other side. One day I went down that hill, and to the left of me, at the bottom of that hill, where dogs had been barking at me, but this time they came out. Yes. <laughs> and the problem was they were together, three or four of them, and they pushed one into my front tire. I should have heeded Apostle Paul's warning in Philippians, the third chapter and second verse Beware of dogs. <laughs> After I came out of my days, or came to, whichever it was. <laughs> and I'm serious on that. I found myself sitting by the side of the road thinking, what has happened? Where am I? And how am I gonna get home? And the man in the house came out, put my bicycle in his truck. I got in his truck and he took me home. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, when trials and tests and the devil and sin hits our front tire. <laughs> Oh, that Jesus will pick us up. Yeah. If we will ask him, he will pick us up yeah. and carry us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But the message, of course, is to keep going forward in Jesus. If you fall, let the Lord pick you up. If yeah. you sin, ask the Lord to forgive you. Right. Amen. Now, I'm one that I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ that first saved me still applies. Yeah. 
Amen. The rain may fall, the winds may blow, but it won't wash the blood away. But at the same time, I believe that when we sin, we ask the Lord to forgive us. Right. We do not do that. We're taking grace for, uh, for granted. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the, point, the important point is that we continue to go on in Jesus. Don't quit. Don't stop. Right. Amen. But continue to go forward in Jesus. In the scripture text, concerning that mark, the prize, the high calling of God, there's several things that I think about. I want to think about those three things. First of all, I think about pursuing Jesus. Under this, of course, is holiness and righteousness and sanctification. Of course, Pentecost was divided on sanctification. The other things are divided on. But they're divided on sanctification. And those, of course, believe it is a second act of grace. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But, of course, the assemblies, of course, which I agree with, it's a gradual process. And, of course, to me, certainly we can see in this scripture, as we serve the Lord, we come into it. As we pursue Jesus, Amen. To become more like him. Amen. Praise the Lord. But how do we do that? How do we pursue Jesus? How do we come into sanctification? Amen. Jesus tells us in John the 14th chapter and the 15th verse. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. No, no. One hand, we can think, you know, it is just fact here. If you love me, you know, follow my commandments. But we fall so short, don't we? Yes, we do. As much as we love Jesus, we fall short of keeping his commandments. What I like, there's another way we can look at it. The 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians is one of the most beautiful chapters in the Bible. In fact, it's one of the most beautiful words that have ever been written. It's anointed and it's profound. Mm -hmm. But look at the last verse of the 12th chapter. Apostle Paul says, covet earnestly the best gifts. Yes. And he says, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Yes. Love. Do you want to have spiritual gifts, Corinthians? Do you want them to work in your church? I can show you an excellent way to have them. Amen. Love Jesus. Amen. Love the church. Love the work of the church. Love your brothers and sisters Amen. in the Lord. Do you want to know how to have the fruits of the Spirit? And to me, there are the fruits of the Spirit. Not my fruits. Not your fruits. It's the fruits of the Spirit. If we have the Spirit, we can have the fruits. I'll show you a more excellent way. Do you want to be more like Jesus? Do you want sanctification? Holiness? Righteousness? Do you want to work for the Lord? I hear Apostle Paul saying, I'll show you an excellent way. Love Jesus. Amen. Because when we love Jesus, we are going to want to know more about him. Yes. 116 Psalm, the psalmist starts the song. I love the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I love the Lord. We want to know more about him. So we're going to search out the word. And we're going to be more like him. We're going to make ourselves available unto him. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. <laughs> you know that I do. But what was in his mind? Failed the Lord. I denied him. 
Was there the thought, Lord, I was willing to fight with you, to fight for you, but you told me to put away my sword. It was hard for me to understand, to comprehend that you willingly surrendered. Do you love me? Lord, you know that I do. And I know what you want me to do, but how is it possible that I can do that? How is it possible that I could feed your sheep? How is it possible that I could catch fish? <laughs> how is it possible that I could do your work? Jesus asked him, do you love me? And of course, St. John's Gospel tells, it grieved the Apostle Peter that the Lord asked him the third time, do you love me? Of course, yes, Jesus, you know. You know that I love you, and you know exactly how to touch my heart and life. Aren't you glad that Jesus knows how to touch your heart? To, they're about to touch your life. You know, I think the psalm that the Apostle Peter would enjoy. When it came to Jesus, I sold it all. I gave him my life to control. Neither fear nor persuasion could draw me to Christ. But his love Amen. has captured my soul. Oh, tonight. Let it be our prayer. Yes. Lord, capture our soul with your love. Second of all, when I think about the prize, I think about the mark, the high calling of God. Of course, I think about the call of God on our lives. And like sanctification, that call can be gradual. Sometimes it takes a while for us to come into exactly what the Lord wants us to do or the things that the Lord wants us to do. Every time I get before a congregation and people, I have the opportunity <coughs> to embarrass myself. <laughs> and I want you to know, I've taken that opportunity many times. <laughs> But at the same time, I felt the anointing of the Lord. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. Upon <clears throat> all of us. Amen. As we do that call of God that he has given us. And every one of us, of course, are witnesses. We have that call to be witnesses for him. In fact, you know, there's a period of time of the history of the church between the time of the apostles and what would be known, who would become known as the church fathers that's hard to, hard to see. It's hard for historians, it's hard for theologians to see. My personal belief is it, the way the church grew, which is the best way for the church to grow today, is one on one on one. Someone telling someone else about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Last time I spoke, I mentioned a Sunday school teacher at Bethel Hill. His name, Brother Turner. And he told he worked in construction. And the men he worked with were salty, I guess you could say, <laughs> in their language. <laughs> things that they did. And there was one day, and he just lived for Jesus. One day that he was in a position that he heard two of them talking and they, didn't, they couldn't see each other. He wasn't eavesdropping, it just was one of those situations that they could not see him and he could not see them. And of course they began to talk about the church, various things of course, you can imagine how that talk went. But then one of them said, I'll tell you one thing, if I ever do go to church, I want to go to Turner's church. Good. You can't ask for a better testimony than that. But the Lord does want us to use words also. The example, of course, that Apostle Paul gives us is just simply tell people what the Lord has done for us. Well, he would stand before rulers 
and you still tell the same story. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. He told it to Agrippa. And of course the scripture tells us he could have went free, but I don't know if he wanted to or not, what was placing him outside. But yet, you know, he appealed to Rome. You know, I can't help but believe. Oh, praise the Lord. I believe that Apostle Paul would tell anyone about Jesus. I can't help but believe that in his mind and in his heart, oh, what's if I could stand before Caesar? What's if I had that opportunity to witness to him? And if he could have, or if he did, <laughs> I believe it'd be the story that he told Agrippa and many others. Let me tell you what Jesus <coughs> has done for me. In fact, I believe the song that the Apostle Paul would have enjoyed, something got a hold of me. <laughs> what does the song say? I went to church. Oh, yes, to, to, to mock and make fun. But something. Praise God, something got a hold of me. I believe Apostle Paul would say, I was persecuting the church. I was persecuting Jesus. Something got a hold of me. Jesus got a hold of me. Amen. And I'm going forward. I'm reaching forward. I'm reaching to grab a hold of that that got a hold of me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when we do witness, of course, when we do use words, you know, the Lord can give us the words to say. The Lord can give us the opportunity to witness to others. But sometimes we may not be received very well. <laughs> Amen. I know we was handing out flyers and I knocked on this door at Bethel Hill, knocked on this door, and this man, don't take anything from any churches okay <laughs> but that's a call on all of our lives Robert Morris the pastor of Gateway Church one Sunday night I heard his program and they were doing a series on witnessing fishers of men and this was the last service at the end of the service he says now Everyone in the congregation has been passed out to you, and he held it up, this fishing lead sinker. And he said, I know what you're thinking. This is a remembrance of the series of teaching. But no, so many of you have come to me during this series of teaching and said, Pastor, I will witness when I feel led. <laughs> so put this in your pocket when you come, when you see someone that doesn't know the Lord, fit, fill in your pocket and you will feel led. <laughs> It made the point, didn't it? <laughs> to me. <laughs> Amen. And lastly, hold that mark. <clears throat> the prize. The high calling. Yeah. It's the finish line. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul had already said in the letter, the beginning of the letter, I am betwixt the two. <laughs> and on one hand, I'd love to go and see Jesus. On the other hand, oh, I think the Lord wants to use me still here. So he was looking ahead to that finish line, wasn't he? And you know, the athlete, when they see the finish line, they reach down into themselves, remainder of strength that they have, and they finish Church, we see the finish line, don't we? <laughs> More clearly than ever before. 
the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to finish strong. Amen. You know, when I think about finishing strong, I do think about Samson in the Old Testament. Judge for 20 years. He broke vows, all of his vows, and he found himself, of course, in the enemy's camp threading out the grain. His hair began to grow, and the Lord heard his prayer. Hallelujah. One more time. Mm -hmm. As far as victory yes. for Israel, he finished strong. And then there's Stephen in the New Testament. The scripture tells us he was full of faith and power. And he certainly preached the word. I mean, he started, he started at the beginning, I think, of the word and went through it. Many scriptures, of course. And also, of course, he followed the example of Jesus because he says, he asked the Lord not to not to lay the sin to their charge. And Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And he kept his eye upon Jesus. You know, I can't help but believe. And this is a, this has blessed me. My thought. Now the scripture doesn't tell us whether the father or the son was setting. All it tells us is what Stephen saw. He said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. But I like to think that they were both sitting, and Jesus stood up. Because Stephen was going over the finish line. He was hitting the mark. In fact, I think, you know, if my son or daughter was in a race, and I seen him, ahead going to the finish line, I think I'd stand up. If my son, the football was thrown to him and he broke the line, and I seen him going towards the goal, I believe I'd stand up and watch him go over that goal. I can't help but believe that Jesus saw Stephen got across the finish line, and he stood up. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now, you know, I know my finish line is a lot closer than my beginning line. <laughs> but you know what's wonderful? My finish line, as far as this life is concerned, is my beginning line in eternity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Glory. <laughs> And there is no ending line in glory. I like that. I think I'll say it again. <laughs> is that all right? <laughs> Amen. My ending line is a lot closer than my beginning line. But my ending line, as far as this life is concerned, is my beginning line in eternity. And praise the Lord, there is no ending line in eternity. Amen. Praise God. Tell it over. Amen. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul, of course, finished strong. For he said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's what finishing strong is, isn't it? Yes. Finishing strong, amen. It's finishing with faith. Finishing with the love of Jesus. We do not know what we're going to look like, but this we know. We're going to look like him. Yeah. And when we see him, we'll be as he is. Yeah. We won't come into that perfection of Jesus. We won't catch him, if you would, in pursuing him. Until we see him. And then when we do, we're going to be like him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Apostle Paul, of course, now certainly was seeing that finished line. 
But he said, now it's laid up for me. Ooh, yes. Glory. A crown of righteousness. Amen. His righteousness? Oh, no. The Lord's righteousness. His crown? Oh, no. The Lord's crown. Simply signifying the end of the race. No, it's not reward. That's later. This is simply signifying the end of the race. Going over that mark. Going over that finish line. You know, through history, there have been many who they say will greet us at the pearly gates. St. Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. <laughs> I owe my soul to the company store. store. St. Peter is the most popular one. They say he's going to greet us at the gates. Jesse Duplantis said that it is Abraham. And he must give a description of Abraham. But Apostle Paul says, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, yes, the righteous judge, yes, shall give me yes. in that day. Yes. He was looking forward to seeing Jesus on that day. He crossed that finish line. And I believe with all my heart, Jesus tarries. And when we die, what Jesus calls but asleep. And when we wake up on the other side, I believe the first face we want to see is Jesus. Amen. The first face I want to see Amen. is Jesus. Amen. And when is my time? I hope the Lord will let me take my time <laughs> to behold his face. When it's my time, I pray the Lord will let me take my time. Can I use the word savor? Yes. To savor his wonderful grace. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor I had when I was a teenager in Luxor, Arkansas was from Texas, San Antonio, the area of San Antonio. How in the world did he get to Luxor, Arkansas? <laughs> well, there were some not head boys that, go to, that went to that church that needed him. <laughs> <laughs> but he told a story concerning his grandfather. His father was a preacher and his grandfather was a preacher. He said oftentimes, uh, in his grandfather's later life, he had dementia. And he oftentimes he would have to go find his grandfather, get him in the car, and his grandfather would not know where he was at, would not even know who he was, but he could always say, Red Dead, let's pray. <laughs> and he'd bow his head and touch God. Yeah. He said, The last time I see my grandfather, I walked into the hospital room, and the nurse was over by his bed. Her glasses were off, and she was wiping away tears. And he said, did he die? No. Come here. Come here. Stand where I'm standing. Listen. Get down low and listen. And he did so. And his granddad was saying, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the nurse said, he's been in a coma for several days. And he just says that over and over and over again. The Lord used Grandpa to touch one more soul for the kingdom of God. His mind was gone. His body was weak. But he was finishing strong. Good. 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 
Let's pray. Father, we're just so thankful, Lord, tonight for your mercy and your grace. And Father, as we run this race, Father, difficulties that comes our way, trials and tests, and yes, even sin that will hit our front tire. But oh Lord, we have experienced your love. We experience your touch. Paul, do we know what it means, Lord, for your presence? We're so thankful for the Holy Ghost in power. Amen. And Paul, in this day, in this hour, and Lord, which we live, Lord, we see the finish line. We as a church see the finish line, the upward call. And Lord, we're so thankful. Lord, uh, the Apostle Paul and the scripture, what it declares, uh, for it declares that you uh, will uh, descend with the shout, with the voice of the archangel. Oh, praise God. It is you that's coming back uh, after your church. And Father, we pray, Lord, in this hour, in this day, let us finish strong. Let us finish strong as a church. Let us finish strong as individual. Let us finish strong in faith. Let us finish strong in your word. Let us finish strong in your love. Let us finish strong, Lord, in making ourselves available all to you for you to use us. Father, let us finish strong. And we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Lord bless you. Bless you. Wasn't that good? Yes, Thank you for encouraging us. Yes. I think I can run a little, another lap. Yes. <laughs> Stand with me, please. You know, in the days ahead, we're probably going to be tested more than we've ever been tested. And the race may be more difficult than it's ever been. Um, I used to run some distance, and you go through the second win and the third win. And the fourth win, and you're wishing for a fifth win. <laughs> but you kept on because you had to finish the race. Amen. We're going to have to ask Holy Spirit to give us another yes. fresh win. Because yes. <clears throat> we can do this. Yes, Look at somebody and say, you're going to finish strong. Yes. Now we're saying that prophetically. Because it's the will of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Donnie. Great word tonight. Yes. Well, raise your hand. May the Lord give you the strength to run another lap. <laughs> May he encourage and strengthen you in every part of your life. May your will be stronger than it's ever been. May your eyes be focused not on what's around us, but what's in front of us. And may you press toward the prize. May God bless you physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and relationally. In Jesus' name, I bless you. God bless you. See you Saturday night of prayer. We need help setting up. Yeah, could we have some guys help us set up the room here?